All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. Back to talk more of the Underground Railroad. We're on Chapter 8. It is called Indiana Autumn. So I want to let everybody know thank you so much for watching these. Really appreciate it. I know there's plenty of people that uh, probably are talking about this. If not, why? Uh, if also, you know, we're... I want to thank... If you're new to the channel, welcome. <laughs> Uh, if you're not, welcome back. Uh, I want to thank everybody again. We're 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 on a really great ride here uh, with all the content that we're making. We're like just over a hundred subscribers away from two thousand. I know I bring this up all the time. It's just really exciting, you know. Yeah, there's for some people, you know, you look at their subscriber counts and it's like whatever. But two thousand to me, that's pretty freaking great. So. Hopefully we can get there and with shows like this, uh, talking about it and finding new people to talk about it again. Also, the comment section again. You guys are great. Give me so much help. Give me so much information. It's awesome to see the response to this show. It's a great response. Um, and also, you know, uh, hit the like button if you feel like it. And if you find at the end of this episode you wished you hadn't heard... Anything I had to say, well, we've got a cure for that, too. So, uh, stick around to the end of the episode. That's not a cheat, because I know y'all can just skip ahead and find out what the hell I'm talking about. But, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna trust you guys not to do that. But if you do, you do. Then you just find out the this, this secret later. You know, it's quicker, and then you come back. Find out that, and then come back. You know, rewind. And then look at the review, and then go, okay, well, I think I do want that. I don't know. Maybe you won't. <laughs> so, first thing I just want to bring up, again, is just how awesome this show is shot. Uh, when I was looking at this episode in particular, it's all of them. When I, As I saw this, I thought of all of it. And it was when I was looking at the vineyards and how they were shooting the vineyards and everything. And I just went, man, they, they shoot this show so amazingly. The, the landscape of America is practically a second, you know, a, a character in this show. And it's just the authenticity of everything, the attention to detail of everything, the, you know, how it really looks the time and feels the time. When they're walking around, I feel like they're really in a version of America that doesn't exist anymore. Where you, and there's places you can go. And I mean, I can walk out my door and, you know, literally just, be in a kind of situ like a situation where it looks like nobody lives anywhere nearby. But this feels like it's vastly empty and still filled with nature. Another thing uh, uh, is the musical score. Again, the score for this uh, show uh, keeps just getting better. I, I really dug the music a lot in this episode. And again, just like how I felt about when I saw the vineyard and thought, like back... I realized all the music has been just so good. And I know that like at the end of every episode they play more uh, like a more of a modern song most of the, some of the times, but uh I usually am already moving on and getting ready to make one of these videos before I uh uh you know, listen to the song. Although I did like I think there was what Outcast was in uh early one of the earlier episodes. Wasn't might have even have been the first episode. I really <laughs> it's a good song. So this is a really interesting episode. I know that people are looking forward to the last two episodes talking about that. And so I was like, well, what if everybody's waiting for 9 and 10, what's wrong with 8? Turns out nothing. It's actually a real easy episode to watch. But it's a very introspective episode. It's, it's more of Korra, her internal struggle. Uh that she's still dealing with everything that's happened along the way. The fears of Ridgeway still chasing her. The theme of not telling her story. She's told her story in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee. She gets here and she doesn't say anything. And she can't move forward unless she's, you know, it's, it's this testimony. And... This is where I leave it up to you guys in the comment section because after a long... This has been 
Fridays are tough for me. I donate plasma. I get this little mark. Makes me look like a heroin addict. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, I donate plasma at 6 in the morning. So it means I'm up at 5, out the door, you know, and, and getting plasma taken out of me at 6. Then I work 8.5 hours in a soul-crushing job and then come home and eat. And by that point, I start to get tired. <laughs> so when you're watching an episode like this, I was having a hard time with all of... The stuff that I know means a lot more than I can put into words right now. There's a lot to unpack in this episode. But it's not a scary episode in much sense other than you can feel, still understand her fears. There is one moment of like real fear that she has. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is the Declaration of Independence. Because they... They have somebody recite the whole Declaration of Independence. And I've never, I don't, I don't think about it very often. I don't think about the Declaration of Independence very often. Don't think about the Constitution very often. Well, I think about the Constitution a lot more because of things that need to change in the Constitution. <laughs> Which also then, when hearing what's going on in the Declaration of Independence, affirms that there's some things that need to change in the Constitution. You know, it's but I think it's pretty ironic that you've got, I don't know if irony is the right word, I hate misusing the word irony. Um, I think it's interesting at the very least that all these things they're saying, you know, like it's this declaration was written by a bunch of fucking old white people who from under England's yoke, right? And if you read it, right, without context, right, forget that it's written by a bunch of old people that are dead. And wanted to stop paying their taxes to England. You'd think that it's a pretty inclusive piece of parchment. Talking about all these freedoms of, you know, pursuit of happiness and all this. You know, <laughs> so I'm simplifying it. Because I'm not going to read it. I mean, right here. <laughs> on this video. But it's, it was written for those people. It was written for the Manifest Destiny motherfuckers. It was written for those people that believe that their white God, their six pound, three ounce, white baby Jesus, uh, it, it, this is for them. It's not for everyone. It's not inclusive. There might have been one or two of those guys who's like, you know, uh, there might be some problems down the road with everybody, you know, wanting to be a part of this. And there might even have been a couple of them that are like, hey, you know, this is for everybody. I don't know what you're talking about. But it's been how it's been used that it's clearly not the way that it should be, in my opinion. And so you've got these things in here, you know, like when it says that if the government goes too far, <laughs> you know, if there's things that need to change, then it's okay to abolish them or change them. Basically, if things are necessary at one time fine but when those things aren't necessary and you feel the need to change it it's okay to do that yet here we are and I know I'm getting I sound like I'm getting on my fucking soapbox here but and I usually swear when I'm tired so I apologize because I'm pretty tired um <laughs> We have a lot of laws right now that are protecting that these white folks are really rallying against changing when it's just, we have all, we have so many outdated things in the Constitution that just don't fit. But you know who it fits for? These racist crackers, these religious racist zealot crackers that... <laughs> Just want everything to be Whiteyville all the time because they're afraid that culture is going to get engulfed, you know, like just, you know, it's just going to implode and, and we're all going to be some hybrid mix of all the races. And I go, I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. It's that fear based stuff. 
that they've been in. It's almost I almost feel pity for these these ignorant fucks because they're just so indoctrinated that they believe the lie. So many of them just believe the lie or pretend to believe the lie because they just don't care about anyone else but themselves. Okay, off the soapbox. Enough about the Declaration of Independence and this, but I did. I just thought that was really interesting that this is, you know, it should be for all people, including black people, Asian people, anybody who... Any, it, look, the Declaration of Independence is an American thing. So I can't speak uh, to how it should be interpreted outside of this country. But in this country, it should be for anybody that's here. Anybody that lives here, anybody that becomes a citizen, whatever. So, but to, to kind of go off of that, it's, there's that whole thing where, you know, Cora's been here for a little bit. And she still sometimes talks in a way that's still like very plantation. And I thought it was interesting, uh, the, uh, the other woman bringing up the having to unlearn to learn things. That you have to break down all the horror that you've been taught to believe. To relearn how, it, how life can really be. How it, you know, how it can be. And, in that, and again, that's something that is for everyone. I think that there, there, so many people in this country need to unlearn all this stuff to better ourselves. And, and the thing is, is it's, it's not really that hard. It just takes a matter of will. But most people just don't have that will. And, you know, I know that there's, you know, I like to blame the 72 million people that voted for a reality show president. But it's more than 72 million. It's a pretty big number of people out there that are unwilling to unlearn old, outdated crap. I sometimes catch myself saying things that I don't even go, why would I say something like that? That is not it. And not, not that they're not okay, really. It just, they're so far out of date that I'm like, What's wrong with you? You know, like move move past these old things and jump into to now. <laughs> but also when they, they talk about understanding the Declaration of Independence, right? Which is that she brings up another thing and it has more to do it doesn't just have to do with the Declaration of Independence to me. It's understanding words and speaking them. So anybody can read a book that can read, or hopefully, you know. So it's like, if I want to read something, you know, outside of my purview, right, or my knowledge, right, something from like, I don't know, like Stephen Hawking or something, right, I can read it, but it doesn't mean I'll understand it or have any, you know, real world way to apply what I read. And I think that that's a really good point is these, you know, the kids are reading the Declaration of Independence, but they don't really understand it. Which is then when you get the line that the Declaration of Independence is one of those things where you trust that it's right, but you only know when you test it for yourself. And I love Cora's response to this. of like, you don't really, you don't really believe that shit, do you? <laughs> and she's like, of course not. I'm a black woman in America. You know, I'm in a white America. Paraphrasing there. But you still have to do it. There's a really great line there. That was really good. Um, but we, all, but Cora here is still really uncomfortable. Because here's this community. I was uncomfortable for her. With her, I should say. Because... The whole time I'm watching this, I'm going, this is way too perfect. And not like there was some kind of seedy underbelly really going on. It was more like, when does the white man come and put his boot on their neck? Because they bring up that, there's a, the guy Mingo who talks about the problem with runaway slaves and that 
the arrogance. The white man will... How did he put it? Like the Mingo's warning of white man's worry of the black man's arrogance. That this whole thing, that before they get too big for their britches, the white man will come and take it from them. And it was a fear that I had throughout this whole episode. And it doesn't mean that it's not still coming. There was this, this feeling of dread that I had while I was watching this, waiting for it to happen. And it's probably based based partially on the history of the show, but also just on history itself. Because when they talk, like, uh, Royal, played by William Jackson, who's just great. Again, I've talked about him before. He's so good on The Good Place as Chidi Adagonye. And, uh, you know, I almost lost my train of thought just by saying his name from The Good Place. Um, that they think they have, they have this, like, system, right? That they're... You don't have to worry about the slave catchers coming onto the property because they need a judge's warrant. This is a free state. They can't just roll up on in here and do whatever they want. But as soon as I heard the term, all they need is that they, 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 they made it sound like it was difficult. But it's really not that difficult because it's still the white man's world. Still is. So they say, well, we keep this guy in booze and he looks the other way on certain things. That is a real dangerous game to play. Because while this guy may love his booze, there's a line. They're, they're just being around a certain type of white person for a long enough period of time. You know, it's white people, I should say. You can tell that they may tolerate things. But you can always tell that there's like this line and it don't matter if you think you're their friend. There's a limit. And this guy, just because this guy is kept in booze doesn't mean that he can't be bought some other way. He can't be like, somebody won't offer him something a little bit better and he won't take it. He can get in. And here's the other thing. He's white. He can get his booze anywhere. If he likes your wine right now, you're making him happy. All it takes is a little pressure and maybe something a little better, and he'll take it. So this faith in this judge, to me, is very tenuous at best. Maybe I'm just being pessimistic. I don't know. I doubt it. But, you know, it's messed up because they, this should be... And it shouldn't be a dis, you know, like whether or not somebody's going to just come and take it because they don't like what you're doing or they feel you're being uppity. They want what anybody should have the right to and we and they have to constantly worry that somebody's just going to decide that they don't they don't deserve it because maybe maybe a couple of folks in town don't have as much as them. You know, all it takes is one stupid cracker to be like why don't I have a nice patch of land out there to make me some grapes for my booze? But um, I did really like the whole royal courting. Or I thought that was really nice. They're really they've got really good chemistry together. Maybe you don't see it. I do. I I thought that they were really great together. The back and forth felt real nice and it was so and again that word nice like it's hard to you know you don't get to say that too often on this show but it was really nice to see but um royal brings up that you know one of them valentine's talking about getting the hell out of there move west away from these slave states which i think is a great idea <laughs> but there's a the line that cora says that you know you know what if there's nowhere to escape to what if we're just running? What if we're just always trying to run away from something? There's no, you know, utopia to go to. We're always going to be chased by these people that don't want us. They only want us for one thing. And if they can't have it, they have to destroy us. And, I mean, again, she's got a good point. And, you know, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of, this kind of back and forth philosophy on these topics in this episode. But Mingo 
this guy who talked about the runaway slaves wanting not to, you know, that this is a problem, talks about, they're, they're talking about making a deal with some white men from town, which just made me wince when I heard it. <sighs> I immediately thought, blankets full of smallpox, like the soldiers gave the Native Americans. Because it comes with concessions. And as soon as I heard that too, I was like, oh, geez. Which is that they don't want any trouble with runaway slaves. But, you know, just the word concessions just means you they've already got you over a barrel. And, and they will be changing the terms whenever they feel like it. It could be a lot worse in the next time you visit. Now, we didn't see the end of that meeting. We, barely, we didn't even see the really the start we saw them go to the judge and they're gonna try to hash out something but we didn't see the end of that i don't think we didn't see valentine i don't think for the rest of the episode i really loved the line you gaze upon me most strangely and uh i was like oh my god do i wish i had have an i would Give one of my fingers to have. <laughs> Maybe that's too strong. What I wouldn't give to have that kind of interaction with another person, like a female person. That would be really nice. They can a man can a man can dream. This one dreams of that all the time. Um, but once I realized that they like each other, I was like, oh, he's doomed. But that's. What Cora's thinking too, I think. Because first she hears the barking of the hounds, which sends her just tearing ass. I mean, she's, you know, out of there, Roadrunner style. And, uh, you know, he's telling her she's safe, but there, she's not safe. None of them are safe. It's an illusion. She shows him his, her map, the mark with all the people that lost on along the way. Another interesting thing is uh, that she's, you know, everybody around there has a gun. She's like the most black people I've ever seen with guns. He's like, it's in the Constitution. But see, back then, right? Back then you had a good reason. Everybody, I, I don't advocate gun use. But back then, you had good, everybody had a good reason to have a gun. There were actual threats to your person outside your door. Nature could come and call in. Animals. You're out there in the woods, the wilderness. You've got to have protection. But the people. You know, when you watch these like zombie shows, right, about the post apocalypse, it's basically. All those movies, all those like post-apocalypse stuff, or you know whatever, they always what it what it really is doing is regressing us back to the time like in the old west, when everybody is just it's all you know all or nothing you know everything's on the <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, um, every man for himself kind of mentality, you know, and so you there was a real reason for it to have. You know, the right to bear arms because things were so, they weren't civilized back then. I don't care if they did dress up and go to church on Sundays. They Then they went to the bar and shot each other up in the street. Or hung people from trees. There were real dangers back then. Now... We, the pandemic starts to slow down and the mass shootings immediately start again. Why? I'm not going to again get on my soapbox here, but I'm just saying. Gun reform has to happen. We don't need this many guns in private people's hands. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I believe that. Um... So she's learning to shoot, you know, he tells her to shoot at someone when she's practicing and you know it's Ridgeway. But we, we see the ladder and the tunnel and this is where things get fuzzy for me because, well, the 
flashes at the beginning, you know, of the of the show, these visions or whatever you want to call them, dreams. There's one where she, you know, she's, you know, pulls the, tr you know, like puts, pulls the gun on Royal, you know. But he asks her, he takes her down to the tunnel and he's like, he wants to understand the railroad. What is, you know, figuring out the railroad. He thinks she's the key, kind of. And I'm like, what is, this is where it started to lose me a little bit. And again, I worked, I had a really, really long day. I've been up for 15 hours. So she got really upset here. And I, one of the things that I noticed is that's really interesting about her character and the actress. Uh, her change from being like free, her free voice, where she's carefree when she's talking, like when she's flirting with him and, and talking open, you know, to other people without fear. And then how quickly she regresses to the slave voice where she's he's like put tries to put his hand on her and she just that sound it's I don't know if anybody else is picking up has picked up on this about like that voice change that's more than a change vocally it's a change in personality like, don't y'all be touch it like it just there's a like a tone that she takes that's when she regresses and it's like immediate but she gets upset he tells her that he taking a mission down south because they're not talking right now he's tried to apologize and my my idea for this right is that she she is confused about what he wants about to understand the railroad but also i think she knows like if she gets any closer to this guy he's going to die all these people that she cares about anybody that gets close to her dies and so cutting him off is a mercy to her right but it's got to hurt at the same time but he's got this mission going down south gonna be gone a while he's wanting her to keep her i think he wants her to say stay but she doesn't which ends which she ends up like burning the map going into the tunnel and going and the railroads there and she ends up at like a hub center which is a little looks a little more modern maybe but this is if she's maybe not that modern just in a more urban setting like a more uh, like a city real city not a town and uh she can't go forward because she has not told her truth in indiana she has not told the full story and you have not found your words is what she sees caesar and of course this is a dream you know and i gotta say this is one of the more convincing dream sequences i've ever seen in a movie or a TV show. Most dreams are done terribly. They're all done like we all like have like real linear dreams. Like real I don't like I don't I don't think I've ever had a dream that just completely made that felt like real life. Like really real life. Like they're always off. There's always something that you can tell they'd be like just off. There's no like just where I, I have a dream where it's so real I think that I I mean there's times where I where something happens in a dream and it feels real but it you know like if I don't know I don't want to talk about that too much longer but it got a little confusing if, for a little while but the point of it was you know she's she's trying to get out of there and the ghosts are there telling her you know you have to tell your truth and she wakes up and she realizes she, I, I'm inferring this, that she feels like, okay, I'm going to go tell Royal everything. But he's gone. He went on that mission. And I picked this because, not because it was just at the end of the episode, but it's fitting because it's too late. He's gone. He's packed up. He might not be back. He might die while he's gone. Because if it's like anything to where, where he went down and found her, this could be really dangerous. He could die doing it. So that's the end of this episode. It was really interesting. And hopefully I made some sense and hopefully I wasn't uh, getting on my soapbox too much. So if you like this review, please hit the like button. 
comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. All that stuff. If you made it this far or if you cheated <laughs> and you went to the end of the episode to find out what I'm gonna what I was talking about when I said there are other options other than hitting the like or dislike button. If you'd rather forget that you've seen any of what you just saw, well, we have an answer for that too. So I would ask everyone that does not want I know how to put sunglasses on. There we go. Uh, anybody who wants to forget what they just saw, please look directly into the lights. All right. And we're going to give you something more pleasant to have watched. Okay. So you just watched something better than what you just watched. For those of you who looked away and you were happy with what you just heard, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.